All right, 94 in New Hampshire, Carol, my goodness. Whew. Well, it is July, right? So mm -hmm. I feel like it's just, it just comes with the territory. But um, last month, if you were here with last month's Painting with Joy, it was so funny because my, my um, I have my phone set up here with another app so you could see what I'm doing and that died. And so the only thing that was working was my front camera. So I was like drawing like this the whole time. <laughs> It was it was quite comical, but we made it through and um, you guys were all patient with me. So I just want to thank you for that. But I think so far it's only 602. Everything seems to be working. So as long as, as long as that's going, we'll see. It's recording. I'll post the recording for you. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. We're going to do a still life today. And um, I'll show you, hopefully you got the picture. If not, it will be right on my screen here. All right, so for your supplies, I have a sketchbook. I always work in the sketchbook because I feel like, this is my mouse. I feel like in a sketchbook, it's more free for me. Um, oh, Lydia says it is 104 degrees where she is. Oh my goodness, it's a hot one, guys grab that drink. Um, so usually I work in a sketchbook and I feel like I, I can just play in here. As you can see, I'll show you a little bit of it. I could just practice writing. Um, sometimes I don't know what to do. So I swatch messing around with a new tool. It doesn't even matter that it looks messy because nobody really sees it. Of course, now I'm showing it to you, but, but normally you can leave things undone, doesn't matter. So I always like to work in a sketchbook. So if you have that, please get that out. Mark making tools, which really just means, you know, color pencil. Um, I have my watercolor pencils, which are great. So if you have that, get that out. Um, this one is an aqua blend by Spectrum. I, I have different supplies at different places. I'm not in my regular studio right now. And so that's why there's no art behind me. Um, but normally I have different supplies in different places. So these are the things that I have here and I just pick it up and use it. All right, next water, not just for drinking, but for painting, keep it far away from your drink. <laughs> I have a Daniel Smith um, watercolor palette. This is really, I, I just tried this. This is new to me, some of the colors and they're really rich. So check that out. It's, um, I think it's Daniel Smith color inspirations. Cause you know me, I like to have you buy as many art supplies as you can. <laughs> I am enabling you with your shopping habit. Okay, um, so this is a Daniel Smith. It's really luscious. These paints I leave at my other location here. And these are mission, mission paints. Um, okay, so my son, my son just walked in. You can hear him. He said there was a baby deer outside. So we're out in the woods. So he's really excited about this. Honey, I have no idea. Okay, so sorry. Um, this is a Mission Paints and they're also great. This was the first set that I got um, when I started painting in 2015. And look at that, they're still like, they have been in here for years. It seems super bright. All right, so that's the mission set. Mission Me Hello, I think is the name of it. It's gonna be a lot of door shutting and knocking and feet squeaking because of my kids. Okay, there he is. <laughs> he just came out of the water, so his shoes. Sorry, buddy. Um, next, we have markers, whatever markers you have just use that. All right. 
so lego 2 yes lego i just built this this morning or this afternoon i just stole this from my son's um stash and hang on one second All right, sorry about that. There was a deer emergency. Let me tell you the update. There's a baby deer outside, it's hurt. So they have to find a way to call animal control to take care of it. Okay, so, whoo, the charred household is just always buzzling. Um, <laughs> so thank you for your patience. I'll keep you updated on what happens. Okay, so this Lego tool we have, um, we have brushes and we have everything we need, I think. Okay, so let's get started. I like to, this picture here is from, the reference photo is from a site called Still Here, Still Here, Still Life, which is on Instagram. So if you follow them, they will, post something like um, a still life on I think Sunday and then throughout the week okay so Sharon says are you sure it isn't just a newborn whose mother left it to go feed I am not sure Sharon um they they do that I, I do they I lived in the woods for many years and they put them under a bush and then go eat Okay, no. so it might, yeah. it might be a hurt, is it a hurt deer, Luke, or is it's it? A baby so Sharon says it's a newborn that whose mom left it to go feed, question mark, maybe? No? Okay. Keep me posted. Everybody wants to know. All right. So thank you, Sharon. I'm not sure the extent of how it's hurt, but I'll let you know, or hopefully it's going to be fine. Yeah, hopefully it's okay. okay. Yeah, I hope it's going to be okay. All right. So in Still Here, Still Life on Instagram, they are really great at um, posting other people's work too. So if you do the prompt and you tag them, sometimes they just pick and post. So make sure you write that down. Sometimes when you're feeling like you don't know what to paint, I do this. I look at the Still Life, at Still Here, Still Life, and then I just get to work. Um, because sometimes I get stuck. Like, I don't want to paint this. I feel weird. So I don't want to do that. So, you know, it's a great place to have um, inspiration. So looking at this, it is looking like a lot and it's a little overwhelming. So I always, I tell my students all the time, just take a little piece of it if you want, or you could try to do the whole thing. But I think what we're going to do is take your sketchbook and let's do, um, thank you, Susan, Still Here, Still Life. Yes, that is the name of it. Um, let's make some squares. Let's do about two. I always like three. For some reason, I like the number three. It feels good for my brain. Um, I enjoy the number three. I, I tell my boys if they are trying something new. Don't just give up trying it one time, try it three times to see if you like it. Cause the third time you can kind of tell if you really hate it, you know? Um, so I have tried when my son had a birthday, I tried having cake for breakfast and I tried it three times. And every single time I had like, a, I had to take a nap. So I knew <laughs> that that was not a good idea. So do you know what I mean? Um, try things. I, I don't know why <laughs> that story just makes me laugh. Like one day I was like, I'm going to try this to see if it's really true that you shouldn't have cake for breakfast. I tried it and it was not good for me. All right. So I'm going to do three boxes and I'm just going to take a peek at this. You can follow what I'm doing, or you can do your own. And I'm using a watercolor pencil. You can use whatever you want. I'm dipping my watercolor pencil right inside the water. I'm just gonna do a quick sketch. 
All right. What feels good? So sometimes I just take a second, think about what I'm doing. What's really standing out to me is this vase right here. Thanks for your class, Joy. This reference photo is so amazing. Thank you, Pamela. Um, yeah, I love the photo too. I mean, like they, they really come up with some great prompts. Okay, so I think I'm going to try to do the vase. You can try it with me if you want. And this is just for fun, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And as you can see, already wonky. My vase is a mess, but that's okay. It has all these like cool looking dots. Okay, those of you that are just joining us, we're out in the woods here by my little camp. And there's a little fawn that may be hurt. So my family is trying to, there's three of them. So don't worry, they're trying to help it. Um, get to safety or maybe it's already safe. I'll find out and I'll keep you posted. Ooh, the drama never ends. All right. If you have any questions, please type it in the chat. I'm working on this little rose area here. I am keeping an eye on that. All right, and I'm just gonna break the rules here and not go with what is on the page. I'm going to try to do this space. I don't know if you can hear the um, barking, that's my puppy. He is outside, probably excited about with all the action happening. If you want to see what's happening, go. Virginia, I'm fine. I feel like if I go out there, I will add to the stress of what's happening. So I'm just gonna chill here and continue because they told me they'll let me know. My husband came up and gave me an update. All right, next. I am going to switch to a pencil because it's hard to see for you here. I'm going to try something different. Okay, so the reason why I do like three different types of sketches because your ideas kind of get put down on paper. And then I'm doing this little plant right here, our rose, I think. Your ideas get put down on paper and then whatever you don't make maybe now, you can do later. So it's cool to be able to look in your sketchbook again later on and um, find out, you know, oh, that was a really cool design. Maybe I, you didn't work on it, but you can go back. So I'm just doing this glass thing right here with the orange in the middle. Citrus fruit, fruits for summer. Okay. It's always good to try to do like a three part, you know, the rule of thirds. So in thinking about this, maybe I'll put this one with the grapefruit down here, but already as I'm putting that down, I'm like, I don't know if I like that, you know? But like I said, you can always go back and redraw. And just for fun, I'm gonna add some flowers. Okay, animal control is coming. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Thanks for the update, buddy. All right. Next, for the third one. The tricky part is on the third one, 
it's like you're forcing yourself to come up with another part which is happening in my brain right now like which one do I want to draw maybe we'll just draw all of them I'll try that or try to sketch as much as I can I don't know why I keep going outside my box um Dina is asking where did you get this photo from again so the um link is on the bottom of this page but also it is a website called still here still life you guys keep drawing i'm going to type it onto the um, it's on instagram but let me see if my if my uh thing works here sometimes chat doesn't okay there we go okay instagram.com slash oops I spelled Instagram wrong <laughs> keep drawing don't mind me still here still life okay hopefully that's it all right, so the flowers. So what you really don't want to do is like, um, what you really don't want to do is, what am I going to say? You don't want to like overcrowd things, which is what I did here. So I'm trying to avoid that on here, but I'm not sure. And also I feel like my proportions are really wacky right now but that's okay Ooh. everybody wants to know is the deer okay? okay the deer is okay that's my husband luke Uh, okay, you are welcome, Dina. Okay, so there's my third one, which if you feel like, like right now, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Sometimes this is a good idea. You just add a little color to it. So I'm going to do that. If I'm feeling like all oh, these are looking kind of strange, it's been a strange kind of situation slash day. Just gonna add some color. Also, it's good because then it'll remind you what you want to do. Right? So that's what I'm doing, just adding a little bit of color. And I'm not mixing, I, I'm using the Daniel Smith here. I'm actually not mixing. Oh, okay, so here's the little deer. It's under our deck. Oops, can you see oh. it? There it is. Oh. It was hurt. And injured fawn under our deck. Walking fine, but it looks like it was injured in the hind quarters. All right, so. Thank you all for just putting up with like, there's just a lot happening right now. So I just want to say thank you. <laughs> I feel like I say that every time we meet, like there's something happening all the time, but that's okay. That is life, right? Such is life. The deer is going to be okay. Somebody's coming to assist. Also, I am not... I'm just gonna tell you guys something about me. I am not good with injury. Um, even with my children, my parents wanted me to be a nurse and I had to break it to them and say, I'm sorry, mom and dad, I cannot handle blood. I cannot handle anything that's hurt. It's very hard for me. <laughs> so normally my husband is the one that has to take care of the situation. So everybody's in good hands uh, when he's over there. I feel like, 
All right, so I'm just mixing right on my paint. And some people ask like, Joy, your paint gets dirty on your palette. It gets really dirty and things get muddy. And to me, I don't mind that. I feel like that adds to the excitement of the paint or like it adds to the, in, like the spunk or the, um, you know, it, it, it adds to the um, happy accidents on my page. So that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so also if like this one's really dirty, I don't know if you could see that, that blue has another blue on it. So if your paint's on the palette, all you have to do is wet it. And then that actual paint goes away and you're back to your regular pigment, okay? So don't worry if things get kind of muddy on your page, don't worry, or on your palette, don't worry about that. Also, if you don't like that, you don't have to do that. That's just my way, because I, as you can see, there's always something happening at my house, and I have to always be on foot or like ready to go. Um, and sometimes I'm just sitting down to paint and then something happens. Um, so I just have to be, you know, have to move fast. All right, so that's mine. My third one, take a second and just kind of look at what you did and write some notes on your page. So like this one, I didn't like so much. And I will write that down. Did not like so much. The good thing about that is you can go back and you can think about it and be like, why don't you like it? Then you can list notes, the big, um, busy. Or later on, I might look at that and be like, I really like how big and busy it is. Maybe I'll make a bigger piece out of it where everything is gigantic. For some reason, I made things really big right now. Um, but this picture is really small, so it's really up to your interpretation. All right, I'll give you another minute to finish up your sketch, and um, we'll go back and work on a giant piece or a bigger piece. So I'll give you a minute while you're doing that. Um, let's see here. Just does anybody have any questions at all? If you do, please let me know. No, it's a busy, busy. Sharon, go ahead. I'm here for you. Yeah, I, I like the way you run things off the page and I tend to put everything in my square all intact and it's not nearly as nice looking. Like I, I like this vertical one, but it's all yeah. in the box and I don't know how to. See. I'm gonna pin yours if you're okay with that. Is that okay with you? Just so I yeah. can see? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Ooh, that looks great, Sharon. But wow. I, yours looks better in that you've got it um, coming in and out of the frame. I don't know how you decide to do that. How do you decide where to cut it and where to place it? Um, that's a great question. Normally, I just, um, how to place it? I think it's just, it's an accidental thing for me. Whereas <laughs> like, as I'm working, I know that sounds crazy. Like this one, I accidentally, that's why I don't like to use a pencil. So maybe this might be good for you, Sharon. Don't use a pencil because you can't oh. go back and erase it. Um, that's why I try to use things that are like either color pencil or a pen, because when I put it down like this one, I'm like, oh, I can't erase that. It's already there. So then I have to work off of it and be like problem solving as I'm as I'm working on the page. Does that make sense? It does. I actually like yeah. that, uh, the one with the red in it a lot. Um, this one? Yeah, it's just really attractive the way you've got it positioned. Thank you. That one, um, I appreciate that. Sometimes it's hard to know exactly. So when you're doing this, like take a note of like, okay, so I like the way Joy has that. So say on your page, write down add red so that when you're doing yours you can add red you know what I mean all right so mm -hmm. Diana asks what brand is your square sketchbook so this is an Artisa brand um I find 
I, I fell in love with this brand. That's the name of it, Artisa, a while ago. And I like that it's square. The only thing that I don't love about it is it, it absorbs a lot of paint. You know how like some paint, some paper, it kind of floats on top. This one will just suck it dry, which is fine if you're using mixed media. So like acrylics is fine with it. But when you use watercolor, I find that sometimes you have to use a lot of it. Um, but this is an Artisa sketchbook and it comes in a lot of different sizes. I have another one that is, one second, I'll grab it. Um, this size, this is also Artisa. And I find that this is great when I'm traveling. We went to California. And so I just kind of use it to write down what we saw or what we did that day. Like we saw some mountains. Um, it depends on the page. I, I find like their pages are not, it's not expensive and they come in a two pack. But the only thing is, like I said, the, the paper is not always consistent, but it's fine because you're using a cheaper piece of paper. And I, I feel like I don't have to be so precious. So Artisa, it comes in a two pack or a three pack, super affordable. All right. Now let's work on a bigger piece. So take a second, look at what you did. Which one do you love the best? I think, I think because Sharon was inspired by the other piece up here, maybe I'll think about doing that, adding to that, but also I always end up covering it. So I'm going to turn my page around. See, you can just go anyway. You can go any way you want when it comes to your sketchbook. So I just turned mine around. So then I can kind of still see in the corner, but also the reference photos right here. See, there are no rules when it comes to doing this kind of art. You just kind of, not everything has to be on the right page. You don't have to leave a page blank. You can do whatever you want. Okay. All right. So here we go. I usually will because I like numbers and I like squares. Um, I have to put a square where I'm working on. So I'm going to take my pencil and just put a bigger square. I don't know why this page is already square, but I'm feeling like I got to put another square. It's a square within a square. You are hearing all of Joy's and seeing all of Joy's weirdness here. And, and quirks that I have, <laughs> but that's okay. That's what makes me me, I guess. So I'm doing another square within the square because squares to me, when I have something like this, you can't really see it, do you? Um, yes, Artisa is the name. Thank you, Hortensia. Um, I put another square in there because looking at a giant piece of a sketchbook page stresses me out. So sometimes I have to put a square within a square. Do you have paints in your hands already? Uh -huh. you have that. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm going to kind of go off of what I have on here in the corner, but also try to stick to this. What I've also done, and I teach my students all the time, is you can take any photo and you can fold it so that you're only focused, this might help you too, Susan, um, so that your only focus is on one section. Do you know what I mean? So you're not like uh, distracted by the bigger pieces. Um, but I like to have a big piece too sometimes because I get bored and then my brain has to move around. So here we go. I am going to take a color pencil um, because that's a little bit more permanent. And you can pick whatever color pencil you like. I'm gonna pick a color pencil that's a little bit bright so you can see I have a light here and I, I think it's drowning it out. Oh yeah, you can see that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go for it and I'm gonna start drawing. Let me think. All right, I, I love this vase so much. Like, it reminds me of like, I don't know what, I, I just love that in, you know, that it looks so um, 
interesting. Let's see if I can move it closer. That face, I love it. Okay. So, and it's a it's a wonky looking base. So as I'm drawing, you'll see here, I'm not really drawing the whole thing. I'm just kind of think of yourself as a bug. You're flying along. I saw a hummingbird the other day flying from, I have hostas outside. So flying from one hosta to another. So that's what you're doing. You're just getting the energy of the piece or your reference photo. You're not trying to make it perfect. Because who wants the perfect, if you wanted the perfect photo or what it looks like exactly, then just take a picture of it, right? Which is what we have, a photo. So we are trying to put it in through our artist cans and make it our own. I love the, almost like a cow patch kind of nature of it, where there's a little, little marks. And look, I'm just, my marks are very strange. They're just like that. Um, I was listening to somebody and they, they call, sometimes they call these things just, you know, energetic mark makings that you're doing, all right? So don't make it perfect, make it fast. I feel like that could be our motto. Don't make it perfect, just make it fast. Here's a lemon. I'm not very good at circulars or ovals, so I'm just gonna kind of make it work here. And everybody doing okay? I hope so. Let me know if you have any questions at all. And Susan, I hope that helps with your question of like. You know, and also when you draw a box, you don't have to stay in the box. Feel free to go outside of it, which I'm doing constantly. <laughs> Here's my box is right here and then the handle is over there. All right, so what else do I want to add here? Um, I love um, this thing right here, this vase with the flower, but I don't necessarily wanna put it right in the middle. So I'm gonna move it close to the, um, maybe move it right here. And make it smaller maybe. I'm just kind of going with what I'm doing or going with what I'm seeing here. And, um, my son, Jude, just walked in. Jude, you win for not slamming doors. I appreciate it. <laughs> He's, okay, thank you. They called somebody for the deer. His update. Okay. All right. And there's a rose right here. This might be a good time for a drink break also. I'm just reminding you, I'm gonna have a quick sip. You might need a quick sip. It's, it's a hot one today. It's okay, honey. Just try to outside. That's the thing, this little camp where we're at, um, if you weren't here while I was talking about it, we have this little camp in the woods by a lake that we normally rent out to people, but um, we took a little bit of time before we cleaned the place for our next guest to hang out here. And so it is a tiny, tiny place, like really small. So any noise is like, you can hear it. Um, so thank you for your patience as we work through all of these things. Okay, so glass is a little difficult, so, but I'm just gonna try it anyway. I'm probably gonna just turn it um, gray. So this is the lemon. 
And now we have the flower. Now it's looking like it's heavy on this side. So if you want to, which I will do, I feel like I have to turn the flower like maybe this way because it is so heavy on this side. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of cheating a little bit and not doing it exact. Okay. And because I'm not always following what it shows here, I might just draw that beautiful white flower. I might just add it like right here. And if you're playing in your sketchbook, it's very easy to just take what you've noted here and add it to, or like make a bigger piece out of it, all right? Okay, so that's my sketch. Um, I try not to get in the weeds and really take too long, but sometimes you can't help it, you know? You get going and then it just won't stop. All right, so my layers are usually done with watercolor first. I like to layer the first layers with watercolor. And then that kind of gets through. Have you ever heard of like that ugly phase when it comes to art where you're looking at something and you're like, ugh, I hate it. So I feel like when I put the watercolor down, I get past the, the phase where I hate it and then I can continue. So I don't know if that's a help to anybody, but I that's what I like to do. Okay, what's speaking to me now, I have a gray here. So I'm going to put that down for the vase and I'm just going to work fast. I'm just trying to get all the colors down and it doesn't even have to be the exact colors because also the great thing about watercolor is it's really easy to layer. I think that's why I love to use it. Um, I've used acrylic in the past a lot, but for some reason watercolors just really feel great for me. Okay, here's the orange. And then as you can see, I'm just being a little hummingbird or bug flying everywhere, just getting things down. And it doesn't even matter if things splatter, I'm just gonna let it do that. Right. And there's another rose here. And it has like more of an orange tint. Anybody? So I'm going to, can you watch the door, buddy? It's about to slam. Okay. Okay. all right so i i love to also did you use a regular pencil for this sketch patricia patricia i just used a color pencil a prisma color pencil um when you're feeling like your work is too like for me anyway, what sometimes when I'm feeling like, oh man, I don't know if I love what I'm doing, I always add the leaves. And for some reason that calms my soul. Um, the leaves kind of add something to it that's just like, ooh, that feels good. So the roses are kind of the same size. I don't know if I like that. So I'm gonna add, a, add another weird flower up here just because, and I, I just mix like a, a dark purple with a red to have this weird look. And with watercolors, I don't care that they run into each other. It doesn't matter. Okay, because right now, as I'm talking to you, my brain is like, do something else. So I'm gonna try this lemon. Oh, let me show you how bright these colors are. This is the red, this is the Daniel Smith. This is, I don't know what color this is. It, it comes with a sheet that tells you 
this is like a almost like an opera rose and you can mix it with a different color which is what i'm doing right now some kind of purple i'll post about what this is look at the mixture of that i don't know i just like how that looks and like i said i don't normally worry about my paints mixing together because as you use water so it's almost like a self-cleaning mechanism. It'll, it'll clean itself out. Um, I need an orange for this orange. So grab some of that. Don't forget those little shadows. Um, that kind of adds to the look. Looks like Quinn Rose. You're probably right, Virginie. Um, and I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, Yes, it, it may be that. It came with a sheet and I don't think I swatched it on this sketchbook. I may have swatched it on a different one. Also, I just forgot that I, the sketchbook is upside down. Also, so here I did just a gray and it almost gives you like that glass look, right? I just put the gray down. Um, it's just an, an like a light grayish. And if you have a white, I don't have a white here. Um, it'd be great to like mix that with a white and make it even lighter. But I don't have that. So that's my trick for glass. I use a gray and then I throw in a little blue. Kind of makes it look glassy. All right. Taking a green because I feel like we need some kind of green and I'm just adding a little branch here. Like I said, look at this. It's like stacked on top of each other. I don't know if I like that. So even though there's no green on this flower, this photo, I'm just gonna add a green. It's just trial and error. That's what I'm doing here. Adding things. Thinking about things. Maybe when I add it to a bigger piece, like say, make note of it and say, I didn't like that. You know. All right. I'm procrastinating. Can you tell? I'm trying not to like. I love that vase so much that I don't want to do it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like when you want to do something, but then you don't want to do it. That's where I'm at right now. I'm like, I'm doing everything else. I don't know if you noticed. I did everything else except for the one thing I really wanted to do. Oh, joy. Why? Okay. I'm going to try it. I'm going to tackle it. I think it's because it has a lot of fun colors. I don't know. Okay, that feels better. As soon as I put the paint down, it felt good. So I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with my cow looking, cow inspired vase. I love it. I, I'm kind of like in my head picturing maybe like a child made this or my kids make a whole bunch of cool things um, in their arts class at school. This is totally something that I feel like they would make. And I am not following what they have here. I'm just kind of making my own circles in different places. Okay, adding the lemon. And adding some of the stems. So as you can see, I'm not really going exactly by our photo here. 
I'm just kind of doing my own thing. All right, so while that's drying, I may go through and I have oil pastels next to me because I love those. If you have those, you can use them. I'm just, I think I like these because they're also fast. So see, I'm just smushing paint around, adding things in different spaces. This is a Pentel hard pastel. I have quite, people have asked me about these. I like to add this as a first layer almost, just because it's super fast, it's hard, it's great for details too. And then later on, I'll use like a softer oil pastel to go on top. I'm just adding more color to my lemon here. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, if you're doing great, that's fine. Just let me know if you do. It's funny because I have this paint called lemon yellow and I'm actually painting a lemon with it. When does that ever happen? <laughs> lemon yellow being used on the lemon. All right. So now for my dots, like to add to the lemon, I may use this as a pro marker. Just, oh, it's not, oh yeah, it's showing up a little bit, but not great. Maybe a Prismacolor, I'll add some dots. This is a color pencil. So as you can see, I really just, for these kinds of sketches, I, I just love to play and I'll add, you know, it's trial and error, really. All right, add some more here. I hope everybody's doing okay. I hope you're using a color that from your palette that you don't normally use um, just for fun. I'm gonna do another lemon yellow for this lemon and I'm not gonna make it perfect. I'm just gonna do a dab of watercolor. The thing that I love about watercolor too is um, I used to paint with acrylics all the time and for some reason, it's not as easy when you layer on top of each other. For me, my experience, I find that watercolor, it just changes. Like this is the same color that I put down the first layer and then I added the same color on top and it popped, you know? So play around with the different layering effects. I'm going to now use a green. And I'm just going to outline some of my leaves. And just really messy. Maybe try this. See how messy you can get with your stuff. Sometimes that's fun to see, you know, can I really just let loose here? This Arteza paper is taking my, uh, taking my, paint and it's like making it spread. So be mindful of that too, when you're doing your um, paintings, kind of figure out what paint you like the best. All right. Okay, Lita, thank you, I appreciate your help. Oh, no problem, Lita, you take care. And if you have to leave, no worries. Thank you for joining us on this fun adventure. The animal control people are here and they're gonna take the baby somewhere safe. And if I find out more, I will let you know. See how it's like feathering? That's the word for it, it's feathering. So this Arteza paper will cause things to feather. Um, just keep that in mind if you end up with this paper. Okay, so this vase, um, I feel like it needs some kind of color. So I'm gonna, 
I love this lavender from the Michael or Daniel Smith. I'm just testing it out down here. So maybe I'm going to turn this into a like a purpley color. So don't be afraid to try things when it comes to your sketchbook. I kind of like that. It's not what it is on the page. I'm trying to keep in mind that the shadows are dark on one side. So I'm making the pigment darker on one side. And then if you hate it, you can always change it, which I may later on or not. Just leave it. Sometimes I just do these as exercise. So does not have to be perfect. Okay, next. There's like markings on this vase. So I'm gonna take a gray and then I'm just gonna mark it right here just to add those lines. Also, I find that when you use oil pastel on top of um, color pencil, it, it um, depending on what color pencil you use, it, or yeah, what, how bright it is. This one is really bright, but it can kind of cover your lines. So if you don't want your lines to show, that's another way of doing it. You could just lightly, go over it with oil pastel, but this is not working. My orange looks the same thing like my lemon. So I might take a red, no, oh, an orange and make it more orange. And then take a oil pastel yellow and go over it again. And what I've done before, if it's like it not exactly what I want, I have taken white paint and put it on my finger and just redo a spot. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like you're erasing it. I try not to do that that often, but if I have to, I will do it. All right, because the background is gray here, I'm just gonna quickly add the background so you can kind of see this flower show up. Do I wanna do a gray? I'm not sure. Just gonna add, oh yeah, the gray's fine. Just gonna add that quickly here. Deer update, somebody came and got the deer. It's now being brought to, did they say where they're bringing it? Uh, they're bringing it to someone, they're bringing it to the animal hospital. Oh, okay, they're bringing it to the animal it's hospital. Right Thank you. Joy. Okay. Dr. Oh, the doctor's name is Joy? I think so. Cool. Dr. Joy. Dr. Joy is going to be taking care of the baby. Can't really see the gray there, right? It's gray. Okay. There's, it's weird because I have like um, silver on my palette for some reason. I'm tempted to use it, but I'm not going to. I'm tempted. Okay, that's really muddy and messy, but that's okay. I like it. What I did was I added a little bit of black to my, um, or like a Van Dyke brown to my gray, just to make it a little bit muddy. Also, as we're doing it, I'm telling you all these things you should have. And I totally forgot to grab a Kleenex or a paper towel. So if you need that, grab that. But I'm just going to use my shirt and I'm just going to wipe. <laughs> it's gray. So, it, or my, my shirt's blue. So it doesn't matter. All my shirts, I feel like all of my clothes I've given up and have just let it have um, paint marks all over it. And I don't mind.
I do not mind. All right, so now I'm just kind of going around the piece. I almost like that this is wonky, this weird vase. And this vase right here, it's crazy looking, but I like it. With all the things happening today, it's almost like it's funny. I'm just gonna turn it red on the outside. Everybody doing okay? I hope so. Also, if you feel like, you know, this is taking so long to go all the way around, I sometimes switch things up. And if I am using color or um, watercolor, I'll switch it up and use a pastel on certain sides. Like I'll show you right here, just to kind of make it faster for myself. Um, because sometimes I just don't have the patience. So on little spots, I may take a pastel and just add some paint around. Some people ask me if I do anything to the pastel as in like spray it. I don't spray it because I just haven't had found time to spray. It. I have the spray at home. I just haven't sprayed it. But also as I'm like, listening to other artists talk, they don't, some of them don't really spray their work, which is interesting to me. Um, I just usually put like wax paper in between or like really copy paper or whatever paper my kids have lying around is what I use, right? So oil pastel kind of makes you go fast which I like. It covers a lot of area. Same with watercolor, depending on how big of a brush you have. All right, so we have just about a minute. How, how does that happen? I feel like time flies by when we're having fun. Hi, everyone. I wanted to hop back on here and tell you a little bit more about Painting with Joy. Painting with Joy is a monthly paint hangout time where we gather together. I'll give you the photo ahead of time or reference topic and ideas. Um, and then we'll gather together right now via Zoom and we will talk, you can ask me questions, we'll show each other your work. And it's just the time to just relax, um, just chill, hang out and create some art together. So information about Painting with Joy will be in the description below. Um, and yeah, definitely check it out and register if you haven't already. Hope to see you there.